Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik from Light Reading. I'm speaking to Koji Okamoto from Viavi. Hi, Koji. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. So, Koji, we're hearing a lot about remote fi at the show. Yes. There was a whole seminar about it yesterday. Yeah. A lot of buzz. What do you, does you think it means to operators, and how fast do you think it's actually going to get rolled out? Yeah, I think uh, continue to be the, one of the hottest topics, you know, from the last uh, I'll say 18 months or so. Uh -huh. And I think the remote fi is more than ever. I think is real. So next year we're going to start seeing much more deployments. I'm talking to several customers, and I see the real deployment schedule and so on. One of the biggest challenge I think they have is how do you manage the transition right you know each operator has different pace and different needs and we talked about in the past about like remote fi being is that just a physical layer only or is that the Mac included or not mm -hmm. I think all those preferences and architectures based upon the what they have in the back-end systems and their architecture so there are a couple of different needs that they're going to continue to have in order for them to migrate over so one of the big challenges with the migration is how do you manage the operations right. and the field technician who may not know anything about the architectural topology right because you have to keep providing service while you're upgrading right. to remote fi that's right Right, and sometimes the operator could be only 10% on network. On this city, it could be you know changing to the five. Sometimes it could be the other city. Right. So they need a tool that makes it a little bit more uh, architecture agnostic, so that the field technicians and operation team don't have to worry about how what the pace is, what's changing, right. and be really transparent to them to manage their network. So that's going to I think going to be the key trend and what it means to the operator. And we have been very fortunate to be kind of front end of this. Remote five for last, I'll say, two years or maybe even more. Right. So a lot of these tools are built into the remote five, which is managed by our new assurance and troubleshooting system called ExpertTrack, mm -hmm. and uh, we are showcasing that into many uh, shows, including this expo. Do you expect it to be uh, done on a phased approach, or do you think it's going to be like mass deployed right away? I think it's going to be phased uh, for a while. I mean, we've seen some co customers talking about in five years, maybe 50 percent or 30 percent of you know network could be remote five. Uh, but between that time, you can also see, you know, full duplex too. So there's many technology transition always happening. Right. So, and, and Cable has done a very good job of managing the gradual transition so you don't disrupt the business right. or, uh, or create a huge CapEx problem. So I think they're going to go really targeted approach for where they need the capacity, where they don't have the rack spaces, where they don't need to save power, and all those needs. And they look at both architecture of the traditional nose split as well as remote fi, and uh, they've done a good job of managing those transitions. So I think we're gonna see the gradual transition like we've seen in the past. It's gonna be interesting to see how they roll out remote fi and full duplex at almost the same time on the heels of rolling out DOCSIS 3.1 at almost the same time. Yeah, I think a full duplex maybe is still a little bit out, I'll say, mm -hmm. from practical sense, from both cost and technology maturity. Right. You know, I think right now that the operator is just looking at if I uh, deploy the remote fire. How do I even set up the amplifier? How do I even uh, troubleshoot noise? Because right. it has to be virtualized right. and it has to be transparent to technicians. So technology is now built into many of those OEMs or the remote fire and managed by the systems which also interact with the instruments that help troubleshoot the problems. Koji, subscribers keep raising the bar in terms of the quality of experience that they're looking for and the amount of bandwidth they want. What does that mean for operators and what can they do about it? Yeah. So competition is very high from cable, you know, competing against telcos, FTTHs, and consumers are uh, changing in several areas. Now I can categorize, I think, three. One is everybody should continue to watch and consume a lot of videos. Like, right. you know, we all travel, go to Wi-Fi or, you know, in the home and start streaming all the YouTube videos, right. or you watch 1080p or you sometimes 2K, 4K TVs on the screen. So when the download speed goes up, Actually, ratio-wise, your upstream has to go up as well. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is it's all TCP IP, so mm -hmm. you have to send the acknowledgement that I'm receiving the packets in order for more packets to come. So this whole video stream requires more upstream capacity and bandwidth. So that's one kind of trend we're seeing. Right. Another trend we're seeing is IoTs. So there are a lot of United of things and sensors and different devices that start getting perforated around the house. Right. And what that means is there's also more traffic going up. Right? right, and sometimes which is a new thing. Yeah, which is a new thing. It doesn't mean you need a lot more capacity. It could be the very uh, uh, reliable uh, mm -hmm. connection that you need. So if you let's say you have a very big noise, some of the IoT right. may stop working because a lot of times it's a kind of cloud-based services and computation. So that's a trend number two. Trend number three is all the young folks, millennials, consume the content a little bit differently. So if you look at the YouTube videos and, and so on, in, all, in the traditional way, all the production of the video was kind of like an NBC, ABC, Disney of the world from the big players and, right. and, and the consumer consuming those content. Now, more than ever, the biggest Kashi content creators are 
the, the people. Right. We're, we're, we're shooting the video and you're uploading the video to YouTube. Right. right. So we see the stats of how many video get uploaded. So what this all means is it's really important for the operator to increase the capacity, not only for the downstream, but for the upstream. Right. Right. And, and also on top of this, you have to be able to know what the quality of experience is while you're expanding this capacity because operators are very uh, uh, stringent on their OPEX and number of people. You can't add a ton of people to troubleshoot these things. Right. Right? So you need to remotely see what the customer experiences are you know, at. So if you're at your house, Alan, and you have a few folks watching things, they need to know what the cons you know, customer experience look like remotely. Right. So they can decide, oh, is that something I should fix proactively or prioritize that one that's really affecting the customer service. Mm -hmm. So we believe the most important thing for the operator, one, is the fixed the problem that matters the most, okay? So, so you need to have the visibility for that. And our solution, uh, Expert Track, really start from the customer experience side and then go down into the root cause of why that's causing it, mm -hmm. you know? And traditionally, NEMS, which is vendors are making some of the diagnostic mode, test tools are just about, hey, here's a noise. Right. How do you know if that noise is affecting the customer service? Right. So we, we really connected those two most important information into one. And also when we talk about the upstream capacity and reliability, the quality, what we need to make sure the operator have is the tools to really fix those problems quickly. So with the latest acquisition with Trilithic, we added the leakage component uh, to our portfolio and that has been one of the big asks for many operators, not because of SEC compliance for aeronautical band, that's because of the leakage is a very effective way to find the problem. Right. And including the, the band from like LTE. So we found out the correlation between the problem in the low end frequency and high end frequency don't correlate that much. Right. So you need to look at both because all these now uh, interferences coming in or going out at the LT band as well as the low end frequencies. And now Trilithic is very much a leading, I think, in position in terms of the home testing, mm -hmm. which continue to be the primary source for the ingress and noise. Right. And we have a great solution for that to help operator to really uh, make the reliable uh, home networking, as well as systematic approach to find where the leaks are and mapping into the overall solution. So you can tell not only the PNM upstream, downstream, but also leakage data in the map. Mm -hmm. And you can dispatch a technician directly to his location with the best antenna and find and fix tools. Right. So the signal leakage was an important piece of the puzzle there. Yes, I think it's becoming much more than in the past. And uh, because if you think about it, fibers continue getting deeper and deeper, right? right? But the home environment is not changing. Right. And it's proportionally, that portion of noise contributes more to the reliability and performance of the networks. So right. It's very important for the operator to really clamp down the home and make sure that's clean. Uh, we've seen some operator who has done very well in uh -huh. those areas, right. has the best network in, in reliability in the industry. Right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Sure.